Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. This is Chris Gamel, and today we are going to be going over the pin element in KiCad schematic symbols. So these are what you actually hook up to once you're in the schematic diagram. Uh, the pins represent a port or some kind of connection point. So we launch like we always do through the KiCad launcher. Open up the schematic editor because we're again we're creating the pins on a schematic symbol. It's important to note that that's different than the pins on a footprint. Um, often the pin, pins are referred to on the actual physical component and then sometimes the footprint and the pins and everything can get confounded. But again, this is for the symbol uh, of a schematic. So, so we'll go into the library editor. We're going to open a working library. I'm just going to grab a um, Motorola library just for just because it's guaranteed to have a lot of crazy looking pins or a lot of high pin count parts. And let's do ah, that's a little old. Let's do a new one, newish MCF. It's a cold fire part V4 series core. So you can see that this one has lots and lots of pins here. Um, and you can also see that they are oriented differently all around the outside of the part. And the reason they're not all on one side or another, one side or another, is because there's so many here that you want to fit them. Now, we could break these down into m multiple parts, basically, you know, saying, okay, these, these 20 or so pins are going to go on one schematic block, schematic symbol block. You know, these over here will go on another. And we'll go into that in the complex symbols video that's coming up later in the uh, the symbols core part of the course, the symbols module of the KiCad course. Boy, there's a lot of videos. Anyways, uh, this is all on one part. So you can see uh, there's about 204 pins on here, I believe. And <clears throat> so let's dive down, though, and actually look at some of these pins. So you can see that uh, pin 168, you can see that the actual pin itself has the pin number on it, and that will correlate to the actual location of the physical pin. So if you looked at a pin diagram of a 5407, MCF 5407, you would see pin 168 would be labeled as edge select as well. So uh, we use the hot key here, we mouse over top of the pin itself, and then we hit E, right? And there, we can also do that from the context menu, right click, edit pin. And then you can see many of the different properties here. So we can see the pin number, the pin name rather, the pin number, the orientation, the electrical type, and the graphical style. And this is nice because there is actually a preview window over here, but it's important to note that these parameters actually highly impact your design and when you are creating components, and dropping new pins in, it's very, very important to get all of this stuff right. In order of importance, uh, the pin name is mostly preference. Um, if you, you know, if you spelled edge select wrong here and it didn't quite match up to the data sheet, then that's not a big problem. However, uh, the pin number here, this actually will you'll correlate that with the pin number on the footprint, which we'll cover later. So this is very, very important. The orientation itself, uh, this actually just matters in the context of where you want the pin to be in your in your actual schematic symbol. So in this case, uh, we choose right, a right orientation, or that's what is already chosen for us. And it's a little counterintuitive because it's a right orientation. However, when a when a wire comes in, it's actually going to connect on the left side of the pin. And that always trips me up whenever I'm creating new schematic symbols. So it's just something to play around with. You can see that if we switch over to left, it basically you know, flips it around for you. And you can tell because the text is there as well. And that's likely what the orientation refers to. But if you're thinking about it in terms of where you actually connect to, then it's kind of backwards from, from that. So let's take that back to right. Um, and now this is Aside from pin number, the electrical type is the next most important because um, there's a wide variety of here of, of input types here, and these are actually used 
in determining your electrical rules check. So uh, right now we have this listed as an input. We'd also, so when, when we actually hook it up to something, we'd want to actually be hooking it up to an output. So when we create this part and we, we actually talk about the pin as an input, once you decide it's an input, then KiCad is going to carry that data through all the way through to the end check. And when, once it's trying to determine, did only outputs hook up to the inputs? If that's not the case, it'll either throw a warning or an error, and that's all determined in the electrical rules check menu, which we'll go over in future videos. But it's this, this little ladybug check mark button. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, you can, of course, list everything as an input as you, if you'd like to. Um, I would not suggest that. I'd say take your best, best guess, especially for things like digital parts where it's very well defined. Uh, inputs, outputs, those are very well defined by directional tri-state. These are all, you know, sometimes these are actually definable internal to the chip as well. So you can sometimes, you know, on digital parts, on FPGAs, you can, you can actually toggle bits in order to change the output, right? You might actually have as an open collector output or, or something like that. So it's important to note that these are potentially changeable within the actual architecture of the chips, but once you're making a symbol, it's good to try your best best guess of how you're going to use it and, and just kind of go forward with that because the electrical rules check, if it's not right, it won't, it won't stop you, but it will definitely tell you that hey there's something there's something odd here and that's a good thing I mean you want it so that you know if you hook up an output to an output you potentially may have done something wrong it'll still allow you to do it but um, it's good to, to know that before you move on to the actual layout stage so moving down further uh, you can change the style um, and this is helpful for a top level glance you can see there's line inverted clock inverted clock uh, and it depends on the style of how you do it. it. Actually, the so the graphical style here is shows inverted as a, a dot on the edge. Instead, the person who created this initial f uh, symbol actually used a slash mark, which is a little bit more. Um, you know, there's a couple different ways you can actually indicate that, but that basically just means it's an active low symbol or a signal rather. Um, and so, so the slash marks one way to do it. Sometimes you'll see. Um, SCAS underscore N or RAS0 underscore N instead of a slash mark. Sometimes you'll just see the symbol here. And what again, what's important is being able to carry that all the way through your your diagram so that you're 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 translating that information properly. Because if you have a signal that's inverted improperly, that can cause a lot of problems. That it's a very very difficult problem to catch. Uh, up here, uh, text size pretty standard, um, 60 mil text size and that's uh, you know that's just a preference for you length of the actual pin itself shared by all parts in the component so um, if you want to carry the information across uh, shared by a body style so you can actually have De Morgan uh, flipped inputs for logics type stuff and finally visible we can turn this on or off you can see um, you might you might want to have hidden pins for one reason or another uh, perhaps you're not using them perhaps uh, that's actually not the best idea because there actually is a non, uh, there's a, there's a no connect op option here. So, um, but sometimes you don't want uh, this the property shown. So that that is an uh, option here. In adding a new part, this is the how you actually add a new pin to the component. Um, so you just click on the add pin button, drop the pin here, and you can, you know, away you go basically. When you are creating new uh, new diagrams, oftentimes it'll actually start uh, incrementing the pins for you. So if you put in test pin here, and we start with 300 because we're already using up a bunch of the 200s, uh, I believe the next pin actually will. Oh, maybe not on this one. Uh, I think it's maybe a new new par new parts you actually uh, drop. When you drop new pins, it starts to increment them for you, and so that's nice when you're starting out. Um, you know, if you've got a whole new design, you don't want to necessarily type it in each time. All right, so uh, these are pins. You can see that we can change the styles, we can change the labels, we can change the orientation, and really, it's important to get it right the first time 
um, in order to ensure that your information is carried all the way through. So the, this is not only inputting the information properly through KiCad, but also it's very important to, you know, double check, triple check your your data sheets, make sure that you're capturing all the pins and you're capturing all the the proper you know directional information in it, just so that once you do have this in your schematic, it's it's a very very tough thing to actually go back and try and you know figure out oh it and I I had the wrong direction on this pin or I hooked up the wrong pin number I thought that ground uh, not BE3 actually went to pin 101 when it actually went to 100 so that kind of stuff it's a it's very it's very tough to catch those kind of errors so it's important to be very vigilant when you're creating this stuff. So, more schematic symbols to come, more uh, learning about the KiCad schematic uh, editor and the component library editor, and hope you enjoyed this one.